So our next speaker also served as Deputy Administrator of NASA from 2009 to 2013. Today, Lori Garver is the CEO of EarthRise Alliance, an initiative to fully utilize Earth science data to combat climate change. From 1996 to 2001, Lori worked at NASA first as a senior policy analyst and then as an associate administrator for the Office of Policy and Planning. And I was just talking to her backstage, and she's clearly an innovator. So please put your hand, hands together and please welcome the Honorable Lori Garver to the stage. Good afternoon, my goodness. Air and space day. What do you do on the other days? This is clearly the best day. Encompasses everything. And to me, uh, the importance of viewing the Earth from space is what has really allowed for us to understand more than we have ever known about our planet and life on it. So this is Earthrise. The very first picture taken of the Earth from the moon, looking at ourselves for the first time in the mirror. We have many things that are attributed to this photo, like the environmental movement. It is generally known as the most influential photograph ever taken. So in my view, this is something that NASA has given humanity, and it is time that we continue to increase our ability to understand the planet Earth from space. We live in a time when we understand that our planet is changing. The Earth's going to be just fine, as David just said. It's humanity on the Earth that is at risk. We know, the science has told us, most, most of this information from NASA, that we humans are influencing uh, the future of the planet and not in a good way. Global warming, the contaminants in the atmosphere, heating the planet, causing Antarctica and Greenland melting, which is going to cause sea rise. NASA studies this, and in my view, it's time for us to let them do more about what it is we can do uh, applying that knowledge to civilization. We know. David just outlined the models of the drought and the heat that's coming. We have the tools to understand this now. And the organization that I founded recently called EarthRise is utilizing the unique vantage point, the perspective overview effect of the Earth from space to localize that data and show people what's happening in their neighborhoods so they will do something about it. We know that in all of our generations, each generation has had a better living situation than the past. We are the first generation where that is not going to happen. I have a couple of kids. Whether you have kids or not, I'm sure you don't want to leave the planet worse off than we have it. And that is what we're doing. So in attempting to turn this around, we need to understand what it is that will motivate people to treat each other and the planet differently. And we know a lot of that is localizing data. So what EarthRise does is take images like this of Earth. This is the Amazon. Where do you start for most climate change talks? But in the Amazon, the, protected, the yellow areas are the protected indigenous Amazonian rainforests. Over this 30-year period of time, this data shows what has happened to the rest of the Amazonian rainforest that is not protected. Moving to Cape Town, South Africa. You probably heard about the dam that supplies 41% of the water to the city of 4 million, and it got below with that center photo last April, 12% of its capacity in the reservoir. If you get below 10%, you can't utilize the water in the dam. 
due to some of the information and conservation and the weather getting uh, allowing us to fill the dam, we got through that immediate crisis, but they were counting to a day zero with no water. We also look beyond the impacts of climate to humanitarian crises. These are the Muslim internment camps in China. China is denying that they have these camps, but we can tell from space data that there are more than a million Muslims who have been interned in these encampments. We can also look, however, at things that are being done to help the planet. This is closer to home, right under the Golden Gate Bridge. You see the ocean cleanup, which is a ship heading out to uh, clean up the big spill that's in the ocean, or the Great Ocean Patch, as it's known. Uh, these are things that if people knew uh, what we could do and see from space, they would treat our planet better. My last example is of the Maldives. This is a part of the world where uh, the United Nations was keeping healthy mangroves and had mandated at least a 70 percent uh, retention of the mangroves. But two years later, satellites show that, in fact, only 30 percent of the natural mangroves are left. So it's not a great story. But I am here to tell you that we are living in a very exciting time because we're here at a time we can do something about it. There has been, we are in, a renaissance that has allowed us the capability to know more about the planet than ever before. Much of this is because of NASA investment, but some of it is also because of you. We start by access to space through policies we helped drive between uh, in the Obama administration, Dave and myself, we are able to reduce the cost of getting these satellites to orbit. Satellites are more capable than they've ever been, and their size is greatly reduced. In addition, however, your data science has enabled us to understand this information. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to get the data out there if you can't access it and be able to utilize the tools that you have developed in order to make decisions that will impact the planet in positive ways. So we founded Earthrise Alliance to be able to connect this information to communities who can use the information uh, effectively. Those for us are journalists, educators, and civic organizations. Now, why these groups? They are large groups and they use local data. So we have a newswire where out of the hundreds of thousands of stories a day, we identify those stories off the newswire that can benefit from images of the planet in those local areas to be able to tell a story. That uh, series of images of the gulags in China, the Uyghur camp, were told by Reuters through uh, Earthrise connecting them with that data. We take the images that are available, not just from the government, from the private sector. We have agreements with Digital Globe, Planet, Airbus, all who have this information and sell it uh, normally, but allow us to use it for humanitarian purposes for little or no cost. We then, just like anybody in data science, look for patterns to be able to identify where it's going to be the most meaningful and develop applications to communicate what's happening. So an application I'll mention, and Deva is so interesting. She has a very similar one to talk about your own uh, climate footprint. But for us, we're talking about training data that will utilize teachers in junior high and high schools who can give an assignment to a class. This assignment, for instance, is look at the mangrove destruction in China. They will make available the data, but students will go and look for the examples that they can find, real science data. So they'll be learning how to look at the data as well as be able 
to then share the story through their own social media apps, whether that's on Instagram or others. A lot of times, the value proposition of space has been a given. We go not because it's easy, because it's hard. We go because no one's been before. I think it's time, personally, for us to really look at the value proposition of space. NASA did an amazing thing with Apollo. We were given a mandate, a policy mandate, to go to the moon within 10 years, and they did it. I feel that the mandate is now to take those 10 years, let NASA lead, and be able to understand and translate what's happening about the Earth to save it. Right now, we have put in 600 people into space. NASA, about 400 of those. NASA spent $1.1 trillion, the space program, in the last 60 years. So not all of that is on human space flight, so I'll give them a break there. That probably around $400 billion was spent on human space flight for 400 people, so a billion a person. That's your value proposition for the human space flight program. NASA also gives advances in aeronautics, in astrophysics. They study the other planets. We've actually spent nearly as much studying the climate of Mars as we have the climate of Earth. So for me, the value proposition is the population of Earth. It's 7.5 billion. We have the knowledge, the capability. We live in a time, thanks to much of what has gone before, to do something about it. So I am optimistic uh, that we can turn this around, but it will take all of us to do that. One of the things about Apollo is it inspired people, a generation. It was primarily white males. I'm going to talk about who might be inspired by a mission to save the Earth. I started a fellowship program called the Brooke Owens Fellowship three years ago in honor of a dear colleague and friend who died at the age of 35 of cancer. We have had three classes of full-time paid interns and mentorship for these three classes over the last three years. These women are aerospace engineering majors, primarily, and of course, they're inspired by everything we're doing in space. But we study why it is that women have not been more involved in engineering and in the space program specifically, and we know it's because they have not connected it to the value that we get from space. So to me, we need these women, we need everyone on the planet to recognize the value that we have brought um, and how we can translate that now into the real benefit for planet Earth. So we do, at this point, spend about 8% of NASA's budget on Earth sciences. And my proposal would be that we change the balance. We've just laid out the fact that there's a program that this uh, administration wants to go back to Mars and five, to the moon in five years. And we're building spacecraft, and we'll spend tens of billions of dollars doing that. In my view, we should refocus on the planet, the one planet in the universe that we know can sustain life, good old Earth. And I know that for my 35-year career in space, no one should feel that NASA didn't contribute in so many ways to our civilization and to uh, the world. It's time now for us to turn back and look at how we can use that knowledge for Earth. So thank you very much. I look forward to the discussion.